Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Germany once again and we've got a brewery today that should be really quite interesting. So for this one we're going to go to Meisel Brauerei Bayreuth which is in Franconia in the northern part of Bavaria and we're going to have a look at a beer from their kind of craft beer offshoot brewery. So we're going to Meisel and Friends today and this one is their Choco Porter. So it comes in at 6.5% ABV as the name suggests it's a porter beer and I think this may well be the first porter that I'm actually trying from Germany. I did have a dark beer that was kind of similar to a porter from one of the breweries in that Franconia area. I think they were actually from very close to Bamberg if I remember correctly, although I don't think technically it can be called a porter. But this is one of the very exciting things about the brewing scene over in Germany just now. There's a number of breweries who are uh, who are trying these kind of new wave American beer styles. Of course the porter is an English style from London uh, going by origin of course but it is quite cool to see a number of these German breweries brewing beers that aren't traditional German beers because they do have such a huge uh, kind of brewing prowess if you like so I'm definitely looking forward to this one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Meisel and Friends hopefully I can review the Meisel Vice for you at some point as well which is what they're famous for there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there of course for all the german beers that i've reviewed for you before and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you give the channel is huge hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Meisel and Friends then and the Meisel Brewery. So the Meisel Brauerei, as I mentioned to you, is based in Bayreuth in Franconia in, nor in northern Bavaria in Germany and it was founded back in 1887 by brothers Eberhardt and Hans Meisel. But during the economic crisis of the 1920s, of course, when Germany had high player inflation and all of these sorts of things, their sons Fritz and Andreas took over the running of the brewery shops and then in 1936 Fritz was solely responsible for the company. Today it's actually actually known for the Meisel Weisse and this was introduced in 1955 by Fritz and his sons Hans and Oscar under the name Champagne Weisse and now the company is the fourth largest producer of wheat beer in Germany and I think the Meisel, the Meisel Weisse is actually one of the most, is a fairly widely available beer even outside of Germany actually, I'm sure I've seen it in Sweden so it's one that I do need to try but the company is now run by the fourth generation of the family and the current director is Jeff Meisel. Now his mother was American and she came came to Germany with the US Army as a teacher which was where he met his dad and apparently his dad was a bit of a traveller. He'd lived in America, he'd lived in Sweden, I think Australia as well it mentioned in the article that I read. But Jeff actually studied business in the US before going to the Weinstefan Institute at the Technical University of Munich in Freising and this and this was before he got involved with the company and he brought his friend Mark Goebel who is now the brewmaster as well. Apparently there was a little bit of a tradition where his dad said to him, oh who are you going to bring to be uh, the brewmaster? or involved in the brewery as well. There apparently was a bit of a tradition that they would bring in somebody as well who was outside of the family but Mark is still involved at the brewery as well. So it's quite an interesting operation but Meisel and Friends is essentially the craft beer offshoot of the Meisel brewery and they run a 25 hectolitre kit which acts as their pilot brewery and since 2016 they've also been running a restaurant in one of the old brewery buildings as well. I couldn't find an exact date for when they started Meisel and Friends. It may well have been 2014 or 2015, something like this. I think I think it is fairly recent actually but as you as I was mentioning the Meisel Weisse is a very well known beer and one that I do need to take a look at as well but they've got quite an extensive range of beers they had some IPAs some stouts and uh, and things like this but Meisel and friends I think are probably going to be one of the first kind of uh, German craft beers if you like that are going to be fairly widely available outside of Germany of course they are just starting to get out there now it seems to be that this whole kind of craft beer boom has just taken off fairly recently I was living in Germany back in 2014 and of course my friend Peter at the Clueless Drinker he's been over there for I think about a year or two now as well and it's only in the last couple of years that you've really started to see more and more of these little breweries that are brewing the American beers pop up so it's very exciting times over in Germany and I'm actually quite jealous that Peter gets to live 
live over there. So do as well, make sure you check out his channel, The Clueless Drinker as well. I'll put the link to that in the description below. But yeah, that's enough about the brewery just now. As I said, all the links are in the description below and you can check that out for yourself. But there you can see the nice artwork from Meisel and Friends. This one, the Choco Porter, of course, it tells you a little bit on the back about it as well, just about the flavour and things like that. Some espresso notes, some caramel and, uh, and things like that. But very, very nice. 6.5% ABV this one and best before the 8th of February 2018. So I'm guessing this beer might have been bottled in the February of this year. But porters, I always find, do need a little bit of time to age in the bottle. Uh, and as you can see here, it's the Meisel and Friends bottle cap on this. So yeah, it should be a really nice beer. So without further ado then, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting. Nice bit of smoky opening there as we'll get it out and into the glass. This one's actually got a nice bit of copper colour to it as you pour it out, which is quite nice. So yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect from the Porter style, of course, it's got a nice dark sort of ebony rosewood colour to it. You can see, it's, if I hold it up to the light, actually, it's got a nice kind of rosewood edge to it, a nice kind of ruby edge. I think, yeah, rosewood ebony colour is a fair way to describe this one. There's a solid finger of a frothy head. I'd say the head is a kind of light sort of beigey colour, almost a kind of cream beigey note. It's not too dark. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that the head there but overall you know it looks really nice and exactly what you'd expect from a porter beer in terms of appearance so let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on yeah my first impression of this one it comes across as quite bready actually which is really interesting there, are, there is definitely a bit of bready character coming out of this one yeah, it, it's almost like it has this kind of bready backbone to it. There's definitely some brown sugar in there. There's a good bit of a kind of caramel malty character. And you can, of course, smell some of that roasted black malt backbone. But there's a sort of coffee, there's a kind of coffee bean smoothness to it. And that's always one of the big differences. If you, you With the coffee beans, you can always just smell the fact it, it just comes across as a lot smoother aroma rather than the kind of harsher notes you can get from roasted black malts. But this is really nice, actually. It just it comes across as really quite bready, this one. You can smell a little bit of the earthy hop as well. And there is a little bit of a red fruity ester coming out of the beer as well. It's almost like a slightly figgy or candied red fruit note. It reminds me of those little heart-shaped sweets that you get in Haribo Star Mix. I always say that, but these kind of candied red fruit esters that you get in a lot of the dark beers really do remind me of that. But yeah, it's quite a nice smell in Porto, this one. It's definitely a lot more bready than some of the other ones I've come across, but it has all the elements you'd expect of, uh, of a Porter beer. But it does smell really quite nice. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a try this one now. So this one is the Choco Porter from Meisel and Friends in Bayreuth in Franconia, Northern Bavaria, Germany. Prost. I have to say, I like that. That's a good beer. I mean, it's actually really... It, it, one of the things that's interesting about this beer, and I always comment on this when it comes to German beer, you know, the German... You, when you've reviewed so many beers from different places, you do start to pick up trends from different countries and even sometimes different regions in that country. The thing you're always going to notice with German beer is just how smooth it is. It's always, they, they, they always seem, they have just a knack for getting the right carbonation with their beers, but the Germans love a nice, smooth, drinkable beer. And it, it's really interesting because this one, it has that typical English porter flavour to it, but it just has the, the German smoothness. And I mean, you can talk about the real ales in England being very, very smooth, but I don't even know how to describe it. But the German smoothness is just a little bit, it's just a little bit different. It almost has a wee bit of a kind of a oily character to it, whereas the English one is a little bit more kind of chalky, if that makes sense. But this is a really interesting beer for me just because of the way it's an English style beer, but it has that German smoothness to it. But that's nice. I do like the way the, <coughs> pardon me, the sort of coffee notes come out in this one. 
it's got a lovely, just, you can feel the sort of bready character, I was talking about, that blanket's the middle of your palate, it's got this kind of brown bready, cereally character just underpinning the beer. Later on as you go into the flavour, you can feel a little bit of the roasted black malt pushing its way out, but it has this kind of coffee bean uh, smoothness to it. And that just blankets the middle of the tongue as well. It's almost as if it's kind of uh, woven into the bread part of the beer, if that makes sense. It's just a really interesting combination of flavours. Um, there's a wee bit of brown sugar in this one. I think that's coming across more in the aroma than it is in the flavour, to be honest. There's not too much in the way of a, a sort of dark, toasty caramel or things in this one, I think. You can get a little bit of it towards the front, but from the aroma, you would think that would be a lot more prominent in the flavour. But really, for me, this one's leaning a lot more towards the kind of smooth coffee side of things. And the coffee stouts and stuff like this was a beer style that took me a little bit of time to get into. But I do like porters and uh, and stout beers that have coffee in them and these coffee flavours. And this one does a really, really nice job. But yeah... Right in the middle of your palate, that's where you're going to get the chocolate elements of this beer. You can feel that nice, sweet, milky, almost slightly vanilla chocolatey character right in the middle of the palate. There's a wee bit of the brown sugar in there, like I was saying, but nowhere near as prominent as you would expect from the aroma. But I do love the way the chocolatey character comes out in this. You can just feel, it, the beer comes in and it's really quite sweet, but then the sweetness starts to just kind of uh, congregate, if you like, on the middle of your palate and then the darker kind of smooth coffee bean notes start to come out as you push out further to the tongue, to the edge of your tongue rather. And it's just, it's really interesting how all the flavours in this beer go together. But I love the smoothness that this has. It just, it has that German drinkability to it, which is quite interesting for me. And in terms of the hoppy side of the beer then, in the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of an earthy note there's a good bit of a, an earthy bitterness there in the back corners of the palate. And as you come further forward, you can feel the earthiness just kind of continues along, but it smooths out and just kind of calms down a little bit. In the front corners of the palate, you can still get a little bit of that earthy bitterness. And I think just round the very front curve of the tongue, there's a little light bit of grassiness in there. I do wonder if they used English hops in this beer. That would be quite interesting to know. But it does, at the same time, you can detect there maybe is a little bit of German noble hop in there, which is interesting. They could, of course, have used American hops, something like Summit or that as well. But I do wonder, just from the flavour, it does. to me, I think there's a little bit of English hop in there and maybe some German hop as well. There could well be an American one. But um, around the front curve of the palate, it just has that nice, slightly lighter, uh, grassy note. And if you just go behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you'll get that little oily bubble where some of the fruity esters come out. And it's this one, it just has a little bit of that red candied ester that I was talking about as well. Yeah. You'll feel that just behind the front curve of your palate. There's that little oily bubble. And it's just a very light, sort of candied red fruit ester that comes out of this beer. But everything in this beer, all the flavours just go together really well. In terms of porters, it's not one that's going to kind of jump out. I, it's not one that's going to can it be very punchy in any one regard. It's all about how the flavours go together. The unique points on this one for me is how the chocolate just kind of congregates in the middle of your palate and you've got this really smooth kind of coffee bean sweetness to it. I do like how this goes together and in terms of uh, a porter beer, it's quite different from a lot of the English ones that I've tried. And I just like how it has that almost German smoothness to it. They've done a nice job with this. Um, it's, I would say, I think on Rate Beer this one had, a, I think it was an 80 out of 100. And this is one of the beers where I would say, I don't think the rating on Rate Beer is right for this one. This one should be at least in the high 80s or low 90s for me. This one kind of captures what a porter should be. A lot of the American porters and things you can get, they really are uh, bordering on stouts. The key difference between the porter and the stout, of course, is that the porter tended to use like a lager yeast or something like this, whereas the stout had its own special yeast. And it's just really the difference in the mouthfeel that is the main difference between them. But this one, it, it captures what a porter should be. So I think it should be better rated on rate beer. Um, so... And that's maybe one of the problems that you have with rate beer being a little bit American dominated. I do think this beer should be rated a little bit higher than it is on there. 
because to me it is pretty nice and it's quite an interesting hybrid as I was saying it's the English style with a little bit of the German mouthfeel to it so it's a really interesting beer and I like it I, I often to me a porter beer is a taster one it's not one that I'm going to sit in session I know people who can session a couple of porter beers but to me, I would just, if I just wanted one beer, I would think, all right, maybe I'll have a porter today, but I wouldn't do session these in the same way that you would like a Hellas or a Dunkel or a, an IPA or something like that. But I think they've done a nice job with this, and I would want to try some of their other beers on the basis of this one. Uh, so in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say this one is on the lighter side of mid-bodied. The carbonation is quite smooth. It's got quite an oily mouthfeel, this one. At the same time, there's a little bit of wetness to it. Uh, the malt base has a good balance between the roasted characters and the, the kind of sweetness. It, the, the, the coffee bean flavour in this one actually does give it a little bit more sweetness. So it, in some ways you could argue that it leans more to, to, towards the kind of sweet side of the porter. But it just has that, the, the darker notes start to come out more in the aftertaste. The hops have a little bit of bitterness and there is a tiny little bit of fruity character. But overall, it's just a nice kind of smooth easy drinking porter this one and I do like how it's an English style with that German mouthfeel to it. I've repeated that a few times in this video but I think that's a good way to kind of sum up this beer. So yeah, the Choco Porter from Meisel and Friends in Bayreuth in Franconia, Northern Bavaria, Germany. A really interesting beer this one and I do hope that I can get a hold of some of the other ones in their range and review those for you. So, I, cause, And I think this will be one of the German breweries that you will find fairly easily outside of Germany given a few years so hopefully we will see a bit more from Meisel friends in the near future but once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff do let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below and let me know what your own thoughts are on the mys and friends beers i would like to know what your favorite ones are and maybe i can review a few more of those do make sure you check out my friend peter over at the clueless drinker he's got a lot of nice german craft beer reviews for you but once again thank you for watching my reviews and until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff and do consider subscribing to the channel the mys and friends choco porter from Bayreuth in Germany. Prost.